we have a guest in the studio, and we haven't seen him in a few weeks because, uh, he, well, he just wasn't up in the rotation, but Dr. Jonathan Tripp is joining us from Tripp Valley Medicine here in Twin Falls, Idaho. And, of course, we do want to point out the show is called Better Health with Tripp Family Medicine, and they have a great phrase, life's too short not to feel good. And we're going to be talking about some things that would make you feel very good today. In fact, uh, getting plenty of rest. Yep, we're talking about sleep, so... Uh... Uh, this should be a little more exciting. I did uh, send an email to my daughter this morning, said that today's show should be a real sleeper. Kids, teenagers so, especially yes. like sleep. Yep. Oh, well, they like it, but at the same time, they want to do everything possible around them to avoid it. <laughs> so at, I was that way at age five. So I understand if you don't want to miss something, you try to stay up. But uh, what we've learned more and more since about the 90s that... Uh, not having sleep or short-term sleep really isn't enough and uh, does cause a lot of troubles where, you know, prior to that time, some of the research that was done that we now consider kind of poor research that said, you know, you, you accommodate, you'll be fine, just, you know, work, work through and your body will adjust. And the answer is your body does adjust, but at a deficit and at a cost. Uh, we want to point out, too, there's a number of benefits you're going to be talking about today that are related to people getting a really good night's sleep. Yeah, we're going to talk about everything from how to live longer to how to look better. So that's, if if uh, taking care of your uh, physical body, meaning, you know, your organs isn't enough, we can tell you that uh, if, you, if you become sleep deprived, you're going to look older. And that cosmetic side is one that promotes or motivates a lot of people. I was told a few years ago when I got uh, prescribed for CPAP that, a number of things it will do, you know, it'll help with blood pressure, but it will also help regulate your sleep to the point where uh, it'll even make it easier to control your weight levels and things like that. I, that, that, that the benefits are almost universal. They really are. In fact, uh, uh, that's, that's actually a whole separate topic. We ought to do a different day, but uh, sleep apnea, uh, the, the treatment is a CPAP machine, which people are often against because you know, they're not accustomed, don't want to have something on their face. The snorkel. The, yeah, the snorkel, I kind of feel. <laughs> um, but the truth is, is every part of your body benefits from it. It's not just you feel more rested. That's that's the initial understanding. But everything from blood pressure to heart to decreasing strokes, uh, just how you perform mentally and physically, uh, yeah, getting sleep apnea figured out is a big deal. So please uh, contact our office if you have a lot of snoring or you stop breathing, you know, you usually don't know it if you're the one with sleep apnea, but somebody else that watches you sleep often can say, oh yeah, you stop breathing all the time. I had a friend who, who actually, his wife didn't like the whole apparatus and thought it was noisy, but he lost 40 pounds and all of a sudden his snoring stopped. So there can be certain things that, so he, he was able to turn in the machine at that point. That's awesome. That That is I will say more the exception than the rule, but I do try to give patients hope that if we drop the weight, you might lose your sleep apnea because it is a weight-related problem most of the time. And we do want to point out, too, as well, that um, I, I was shocked when I was prescribed the mask, and, the, and, uh, and, and uh, I was also shocked by how many times the apnea came up when I was at the sleep center. But I went to church, and I started talking after church with people about it, and how many people I went to church with are also uh, using CPAP. Yeah. No, it's it's more common than you think. You're not the only one out there. In fact, uh, the machines themselves have become much more sophisticated, more tolerable, and a lot quieter. Uh, you know, I from 10 years ago where they were pretty noisy, now they're basically small white noise in the background. So I wouldn't let that deter you. But let me tell you a little bit about sleep benefits. Uh, getting a good night's sleep. In fact, uh, it's hard to say exactly how many hours is, is a good night's sleep, but in general, they're talking about more than seven hours of sleep a night, uh, which some of us will say, I, I never get seven hours of sleep at night. And there are a few, a handful of people that really do well on even four to five hours, but the majority, that seven plus is really the target. Um, I, I know my personal experience, I can get by on a lot less. Going through residency, I got by on way less than you want to admit to. In fact, when I would get five hours of straight sleep, it, I was like a new man. And so, uh, you know, to say seven hours is the minimum, you know, I, 
I got seven hours last night. I feel great. It's one of my better days. If I get six hours, I can do fine for several days in a row and then start to have uh, some things that start to show up in my attitude and my physical and, and even sometimes, you know, mental thinking. In fact, the problem is, is we often don't know we're slowing down mentally when we've lost sleep, um, it, it, but it does show up in work performance, shows up in accidents, and we're going to talk about a lot of those. But the good news is, if you want an improved immune system, get good sleep. If you want good heart and uh, lung function, get good sleep. If you want better memory, better cognitive function, do you want to be sharper during the day when you're awake, get good sleep. Uh, your blood pressure drops if you get decent sleep. What's interesting is I have to deal with people's blood pressure all the time. And one of the questions I ask when it's high is, tell me about how you slept. How's your anxiety? You know, those things drive blood pressure up. But sleep, poor sleep, drives up anxiety and stress. And so one of the biggest things I can do for someone that comes in with a complaint about feeling a lot of anxiety or being stressed is, let's get you a good night's sleep. And even if that's with a little bit of medication, a lot of times I don't have to treat the anxiety or depression. More coming up with Dr. Jonathan Tripp at 840 on Better Health. Dr. Jonathan Tripp in studio with us this morning from Tripp Family Medicine here in Twin Falls. Bill Colley with you as well, answering telephones. You're listening to Better Health on News Radio 1310 KLIX at newsradio1310.com. We need to ask you for people who are looking for a new doctor, maybe they're new to town uh, or they like a change. How do they get in touch with you? Uh, well, you just can't. Yeah. Oh no, no. We have yeah, us, the back door. Yeah, there you go. Several several ways. A telephone is the easiest, I think. It's two zero eight nine three three forty four hundred. That's two zero eight nine three three forty four hundred. And then we have uh, our website, which is tripvalleymedicine dot com, as well as on Facebook at Trip Valley Medicine. You can find us there. Um, and we're located across from the post office, north side of town, on Fillmore. Uh, straight across from their entrance is our building. So that's uh, an easy way to just walk in to uh, set an appointment. We'd love to have that. I, and while I'm talking about the office, we're in the middle of doing a uh, coat drive uh, for our, uh, well, for several places, but mainly for the uh, Valley House. Um, and we are looking for kids uh, and men and women, because these are single parents with, that are taking care of kids. So we've, we're trying to put together coats, and we're trying to do it early. So we're uh, ending the drive really in about a week from now. Uh, actually, actually closer to two weeks. I think it's the 15th. Um, but bring coats by our office. We have a, a box and a poster out front. We'd love to take whatever you can. And just as long as they're not absolutely trashed, if they're clean, and even if they're old, that's perfect. Uh, because we're trying to get them to the kids, the parents, before the weather really kicks in and gets cold. This morning was pretty cold, but it's going to get worse. Uh, we were talking a little bit during the break about problems with sleep deprivation, and you were citing, I mean, I've heard of people having accidents driving because of sleep deprivation or falling asleep at their desk. You were citing some of the best-known modern disasters as being related to it. Yeah, it's really interesting. If you go back a little while, there's a chemical plant in India that uh, – blew up and killed hundreds of people. Um, let me give you the right names. Bhopal, India, chemical plant there. The nuclear reactor meltdowns at Three Mile Island and in Chernobyl, uh, as well as uh, the not too long ago, the cruise ship, the Star Princess, that tipped over sideways. I think it's off the coast of Italy. And even the Exxon Valdez, the oil spill, the big oil spill that uh, we're probably familiar with, all of those were had to do with sleep deprivation and accidents caused by poor judgment, and lack of sleep. And so those are those are big ones, but we have a lot of little ones, you know, whether it's a car accident because somebody fell asleep. And uh, in fact, that's a really good one to bring up is when you take people in a controlled environment, controlled uh, track for driving, and you uh, have people that are drunk and you have people that are sleep deprived, the results are essentially identical. And so if you think you can drive while drunk, you probably think you can drive well sleep deprived, and neither one t turns out very well. So that's one way you lose. Very your life similar, faster. aren't they? Though very, with... almost identical uh, accident rates, poor you know judgment, reaction times are really slowed. And so 
let me just kind of tell you some of the consequences. Uh, according to the National Institutes for Health, they talk about when people are uh, sleep deprived, and a lot of this they took from uh, medical interns and residents, you know, that have a chronic history of being sleep deprived, which, by the way, a lot of that has been changed over about the last 10 years. They've actually reduced the maximum hours that you can work. Um, I, I got to enjoy the full maximum hours, in other words, unlimited hours. <laughs> and, and I understand feelings of sleep deprivation, but they talk about involuntary microsleeps. Well, you know, you're just falling asleep standing almost. Attention to intensive performance is unstable uh, with increased errors of omission and commission. Response time slows, so that's whether it's a physical or mental response time. Uh, performance declines in short-term recall of your working memory. Uh, learning reduced likelihood that you can preserve uh, or create a solution is really down. So, I mean, these sound like big words, and they're coming out of National Institutes for Health, but the, uh, what they say, there's compensatory efforts to remain behaviorally effective are increased. Well, what do they mean? They mean they're talking about stimulants. They're talking about it. My dad used to, he suffered from sleep apnea, and he'd be driving along and biting his finger to, to maintain, you know, to try to maintain alertness. And so that's a compensatory effort. Um, the, the tasks that you do that usually are done well deteriorate and they don't, they're not as well performed. So if you're doing accounting, guess what? It's not going to go as well. If you're, if you're driving a, a forklift, that's not going to go as well. And, and accidents are much more likely. Um, and the person you're doing the accounting for is probably not going to be really happy with the outcome of things that just don't go well, or it's going to take you a lot longer to figure it out because your brain's not functioning as well. So that's National Institutes for Health. I pulled up another one that uh, is titled uh, 10 Frightening Costs of Sleep Loss. And I thought this would be great, especially here's my cosmetic one, Accelerated Skin Aging. Who would think that just not getting enough sleep makes you look older? Well, anybody you see bags under their eyes, you, you understand that. But 2013, uh, this is uh, research from Case Medical Center. Um, and they talk about... They, they used uh, premenopausal women ages 30 to 49. Half of them were determined to have poor sleep quality. And based on the average amount of sleep, um, the researchers found no significant difference between the groups in respect to signs of uh, ex extrin extrinsic aging, which is like deep wrinkles and freckles, primarily attributable to sun exposure. But they did find significant difference in what they call intrinsic aging, fine lines, uneven pigmentation, slacking skin, reduced elasticity. So if you want to look old before your time, stay up. There are a lot of people, um, and you know, even in the medical professions, I know nurses who they get asked to stay a second shift because someone is sick and someone didn't show up. They have all these issues. So their days get very long. And so it, it still happens there because I have a friend who works in a rehab center, another works in a nursing home, and they are constantly sleep deprived. You've got that going on. When I worked for the postal service in a sorting plant, I was on the overnights, but my overnight shift the hours changed multiple times per week. So uh, you've got a lot of these swing workers and shift workers who just do not have a constant, you know, the, the advice being you go to bed at the same time and get up at the same time on a daily basis isn't going to work for a lot of people in their, in their lives. It, it isn't. And so individual cases, you got to take individual measures to improve things. Uh, I got a good example of a, a patient who works swing shift and, you know, also takes care of his uh, uh, father who has Alzheimer's. And so although the father sleeps most of the night while he's working, that works out pretty well. But when he's home in the day, it's a crapshoot as to whether he gets to sleep well or not. That's a, that's a circumstance that I can't just read off the National Institutes for Health and say, here's your remedy. It really has to be individualized. But the, the bottom line is the effort is you've got to find better ways to get more consistent sleep if you have to work nights or swing shift, do your best to make your sleeping habits outside of that consistent. Um, and even if you need something like melatonin or prescription medication to make sure that when you do sleep, it's you're sleeping well, that's something you can talk to your uh, you know doctor about, and we'd be happy to discuss that. But there are a lot of situations that there is no easy answer. If everybody worked from you know eight to five every day, it'd be an easy answer. And the truth is, is most people that, that work hard 
uh, they don't work eight to five. You know, they're doing, and then they have families and they're doing things outside of that. So we have a lot of pressures to do a lot of things that keep us awake or try to, you know, limit our time to be able to sleep. And the, the, the take home message on all of this is if you sleep longer, you will live longer and you will live better. So the answer is, you know, that doesn't mean 14 hours a day of sleep, but when we're talking the average person is getting about six, we're trying to get another hour in there, another get you to seven to eight, and, and it will benefit you physically, emotionally, uh, you know. And I, I don't know if I could say spiritually, but I'll tell you what, you know, if you don't have good sleep, you're not doing well on most fronts in your life. So work work on that is the real take-home message of this. I remember reading where the, uh, the comedian and... Uh... Steve Allen uh, was said to get 12, 13 hours sleep a night, and people said that's too much. But he wrote something on the order of a thousand songs during his life, multiple books, and was very successful. And so, but some people, I think, probably physiologically can get by on five or yeah. four. No, there are some that just seem to do phenomenal on shorter sleep. So, you know, the, the rule is not uh, uniform. In other words, one size does not fit all, Every, everybody's different. On the other hand, I dare you to try seven or eight hours of sleep consistently for about two weeks and see if you don't feel better. I, I bet for those of us that think, oh, I'm good on five. There's, you, a, there's part of the culture that brags about depriving themselves. Yeah, absolutely, and I, I'm part of that culture. I, you know, I, I grew up uh, through my training uh, with people that were excited about, you know, I made it uh, 36 hours without a, without a bit of sleep because that was my shift, whereas, you know, that's not good for you, but you do that not once, but you do that over and over for about six weeks straight. And believe me, at the end of that rotation, you're you're not the same person. And then you get to go to one that's you know only a twelve hour shift a day, and you think you're doing half time. There was a broadcast executive named Mel Carmazan who I remember reading he'd he'd leave the office at midnight. He'd be back in the office at four a.m. So unless he was taking a nap on the office couch in the middle of the day, he might be getting three hours sleep a night. And he did it seven days a week for years. But his justification was, I built this really large company, and if I wasn't here all the time... Yeah, it wouldn't function the right way. Yeah, it is true. When the owner's there, things tend to work a little better. But, you know, at what price? And that's that's really where we are. You're speaking of that. We've got about three minutes to go. Uh, the bottom line on this is this can be very dangerous in the long run. Yeah, short term, taking an extra shift, working an extra, you know, time period... That's not a big deal. And, and there's a lot of argument as, can you catch up from missed sleep? Well, I think on a one-time basis, absolutely. But if you chronically, you know, you can't do uh, three hours a night and then on the weekend sleep for 12 hours and say, well, look, I made it up. That 12 hours will help, but you'll never get back where you were if you were pretty consistently getting closer to that seven hours of sleep. So it, it's increased risk for heart attack, stroke, uh, dementia, uh, definitely increased risk for emotional problems like anxiety and depression. So if you want to live better, sleep longer. And that's really the message here from a physical and uh, you know emotional point of view that you'll just you're much more likely to be a happier person if you get decent sleep. It, it, for people who you know maybe vacation is the time to test this out. Go to bed when you're tired and then when you wake up in the morning on a natural basis, you should be able to find out just how much you need per night. Yeah, and a lot of times when I'm starting vacation, those first few days I'm still playing catch up and I'm sleeping more than I think I really need to. By the end of vacation, that's probably when I would be able to figure out what's my, where's my happy medium. I had a college professor who said after a week's vacation he was awake till 4 a.m. and sleeping till noon. Uh, so it actually changed not only his hours of sleep, but it completely changed around when he went to bed and when he got yeah, out of bed. It's called the circadian rhythm. Yeah, that it got all messed up. Sounds like he was staying up late doing stuff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Having fun because he had time off. Yeah, then uh, you have, when you come back to work, you've got to deal with all of that. Well, we'd it, love to talk to anybody who needs to talk about this. A reminder on the coat drive, kids, adults, anything you have would be helpful because they're going to people who need them. Um, you can reach us at 933 or just remember, we're across the street from the post office on the north side of town. We got to remind people that Thanksgiving uh, weekend last year was just bitterly cold around here. Yeah, it's coming, and uh, so we will see some of those temperatures at some point this winter. Yep. 
Well, and don't forget, if you need those skin biopsies done before the end of the year, deductibles are going to probably change over 1st of January. So call us now. Don't call us the end of December. That's a great idea. We want to thank Dr. Jonathan Tripp for stopping in this morning. And 9 o'clock news is on the way. Also, we expect to be joined by Anthony Tompkins. Uh, Anthony is uh, challenging Mike Simpson. You, know, you may not know it if you read the, uh, the newspapers because they focus just on Democrats and Republicans. Uh, but Anthony is going to be joining us in a few minutes in the studio just after the 9 o'clock news from Fox. Right now, it's, uh, well, we're back to 32. Uh, and I want to point out, as Dr. Tripp said, colder weather is on the way.